great. Thank you so much, Rizma. I also want to acknowledge Wahela Johns, who runs our Office of Indian Energy, who um, were, which is the entity responsible for these awards today. I, I, I want to give a special thanks to Senator Lisa Murkowski. Um, you're going to hear from her in a minute, but for her really strong support of the work in the Department of Energy's Office of Energy uh, of Indian Energy. Uh, and I have to acknowledge and add, especially for her great leadership in helping to negotiate the bipartisan infrastructure framework, which should be marked up in the Senate Energy Committee tomorrow, and which will give, I think, the Office of Indian Energy, along with the president's budget, additional resources to be able to help some of these communities. So it is our pleasure uh, to announce today that the office has selected uh, its first round of tribal energy grants this year. We're investing $12 million in projects within 13 American Indian and Alaska Native communities, all aimed at reducing energy costs and strengthening energy security and resiliency. Um, the announcement obviously comes at a moment of deep urgency as the summer of uh, record breaking heat waves and droughts and wildfires has repeatedly reminded us we're staring down a, a twin imperative really. We have to build greater resilience in our communities and, and across our electrical system and we have to shift to clean energy as quickly as possible. President Biden uh, has committed this administration to getting the nation on track to cut carbon emissions by in half by the end of this decade, by 2030 in half, and then to reach 100% clean electricity by 2035, and then to hit net zero uh, across the economy by 2050. These are big and bold, uh, audacious goals, but we have to hit them if we're gonna confront this climate crisis. And if we're gonna seize, by the way, the enormous opportunities, economic opportunities along the way, this market for, for clean energy and for carbon reducing products is going to skyrocket to at least 23 trillion by the end of this decade. And as it grows, we're gonna be able to bring more clean and reliable energy to more communities. And we're gonna hopefully leave them with lower bills and cleaner air. This is the intention, better health, new opportunities for good paying jobs. And we can see this potential in the grants that we are announcing today. Collectively, these projects are going to fund building retrofits to increase energy efficiency, along with new solar and battery storage installations. Uh, all told, they, they will produce uh, three and a half megawatts of clean energy generation and over three and a half megawatt hours of battery storage. And that will power 1300 tribal buildings and save these 13 communities a combined $1.8 million annually. And they'll allow these communities to co connect essential services to microgrids and to power, uh, like you'll hear uh, on the award today that we're featuring, which is going to provide local power and protecting um, communities from climate disasters. But it's just a first step right toward our clean energy future. With, with the Build Back Better agenda, we can take big leaps uh, forward. The president has uh, proposed uh, once in a century investments in the clean energy transition that would support projects like these all over the country. The bipartisan uh, infrastructure framework has, has committed, uh, assuming that we get it across the finish line, historic investments in transmission, for example, and in projects that reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. You know, and once Congress uh, passes this, um, the president's agenda, including the bipartisan infrastructure framework and what follows, you know, we'll make sure that the communities that have all too often gone unseen and unheard are at the front of the line for the benefits. And this, of course, includes all too many tribal communities across the country. It's why in April um, we held DOE's first formal tribal consultation, which kicked off a dialogue with the leaders from around 40 tribal nations. And that dialogue is gonna guide us as we work alongside American Indian and Alaska Native communities to help develop the creative solutions that they need uh, to power homes and businesses and, and lower energy bills and, and sustain uh, local 
businesses and generate new jobs all across Indian country. So we're starting that work today with these 13 uh, communities. We're eager to expand that in the months and the years ahead. And with that, we'll hear from a great leader, the senior senator from Alaska, Senator Lisa Murkowski. Well, Secretary Grenholm, thank you uh, for the opportunity to, to be with you as, as we uh, are able to highlight and, and recognize some of these communities that will be the recipients of these awards from the Department of, of Energy. It is, it's good, I think, to be able to focus on the good things that, that can come from the Office of, of Indian Energy as they, as they work to help facilitate and advance the, the needs of not only Alaska Natives, but, but uh, our American Indian uh, and indigenous peoples uh, around the country. So to be able to, to be here today and talk about some of the, the opportunities that lie ahead, I think is, is very, very important. You note know the work that is underway as we speak with the bipartisan infrastructure proposal. Um, there's still a fair amount of, of back and forth that's going on, but I think that, that that is all good because it means that discussions are continuing in earnest. And I think we will see uh, positive outcomes for the entire country, urban and rural. And, and when I think about rural, um, so many of the communities in, in Alaska are beyond the definition of rural. They are bush, they are frontier, and many of these communities are, are Alaska native villages. There is 573 federally recognized tribes in, in the country and 231 of these, are, these tribes are in Alaska. So the Office of Indian Energy plays a very key and a very critical role. Um, we face very, very high uh, energy costs throughout much of, of the state. And in some of our smaller communities, uh, rural residents can face uh, electricity rates that are about 800 times, 800 percent higher than the national average. So when you think about what this means, when you're paying that much just to stay warm, that is less that you have to feed your family. That is less that you have for everything else that goes on. I, I never forget the conversation that I had with a foster mom who approached me. I was in a town hall meeting in the community of Antioch. And Antioch just happens to be one of the community, one of the, one of the, uh, the tribes that is the recipient today. Um, but she approached me with a, a receipt and it was a receipt for, um, for five gallons of home heating fuel. $50, she was paying $10 a gallon for her, for her home heating fuel. And she had uh, a foster baby that was, a, was, a, was an infant. And she said, this week I'm choosing to keep my house warm. Next week I'm buying formula. These are not choices that families should have to make. And unfortunately uh, that was a situation in, in Antioch, but we know that those stories are, are heard in far too many of, of our communities and in far too many of our native communities. So the opportunities with these grants will, will help translate to, to the resiliency, to reducing the costs, um, making, making life just truly more, more, more tolerable for our families. We've been working for, for some time now to, um, to enhance and build out the Office of Indian Energy. When I was uh, chairman of the, of the Senate Energy uh, Committee, we were able to, uh, to advance bipartisan legislation to reauthorize and improve the Department uh, of Energy's Office of Indian Energy um, as an appropriator on that interior uh, committee. I have been able to, to secure some significant funding for the office. We have received, we were able to secure $22 million, uh, $6 million increase in funding for uh, OIE within the FY 2021 year end appropriations uh, package. In the Energy Act of, of 2020, which we passed last year, we were able to expand the definition of tribal lands to include any census tract where the minority, where the majority, excuse me, 
of, of residents are Alaska Natives or enrolled members of a federally recognized Indian tribe or village. Um, Secretary is also able to reduce cost share requirements for the tribal energy grant program. Um, we all recognize that this is, this is significant in, in that so many of, of our villages simply don't have the means and the ability to, to meet those, uh, those cost shares. So this is, this is important. I think we recognize that um, we're not changing the world with these, with these smaller grants. Um, some may say, well, you're just changing out, uh, uh, out lights. And you know what? If we can reduce the costs, if we can reduce the, 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 the diesel that is used in these communities to power their communities by any increment, that puts us money ahead. And so I think sometimes we, we, we take the approach that if we can't if we can't completely retrofit everything, if we can't completely um, uh, turn a system so that it is wholly uh, renewable and efficient um, and affordable at the same time, then it isn't worth doing. We should never assume that. We have to know that these, these grants, these opportunities allow us to take steps forward that are going to be important. And I keep, again, I keep that, that woman from ANIAC in, in my mind, I keep her the receipt that she provided me in, in uh, my belongings so that we not forget that everything that we can do to reduce the reliance on, on diesel, to move towards greater resiliency, to help reduce costs, to be more efficient, that this is going to help uh, our native peoples, whether they be in Metlakatla, in Antioch, or, or back here on the East Coast. So Madam Secretary, thank you for your leadership on this. Good working with you, and uh, delighted delighted to know that um, in Alaska we're going to be seeing the difference coming out of the Office of Indian Energy. And it's good to see good to see Kealani on the on the program here today. And with that, thank you, um, uh, Senator. Um, we have, as the Senator noted, uh, Kealani Keo Booth, who is a member of the Metlakatla um, Indian Community Tribe. He's also a councilman on the tribe council and chair of the tribe's planning committee, as well as on the board, I'm sorry, the board chairman of the Metlakatla Power and Light um, Utility, which is an instrumentality um, part of the tribe. And so I will turn that over um, to you, Mr. Booth, to um, speak about the award. Thank you very much. I have a uh, statement prepared. I wanna start out by thanking Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm and Senator Mikowski for your efforts and insight on prioritizing this project. We appreciate the efforts also of Senator Stedman and State Representative Dan Ortiz from Alaska, as well as the Department of Energy Indian Energy Program and Senior Advisor, Ms. Walea Johns, and staff and Alaska Advisor Gibby Kokonowski for his assistance as well, and everyone else involved in seeing our Intertai project through to completion. On the technical and financial front, this Intertai project has been 20 years on the drawing board. This project went through dozens of feasibility studies and multiple grants from both the federal government and the state of Alaska, but it remained desktop study rather than a reality. After about four years ago, in the midst of a severe drought in this region, we went through a challenging time here at MPNL. The drought and its related challenges required a fresh look at our organizational structure and all the different studies that had been done on the Intertie project. With the help of some strong advice from our consultants, Baker Tilly and Cameron Associates, and good tribal leadership from our council, we were able to strengthen MPNL and rethink how this project should be engineered and financed. This announcement by Secretary Granholm and our friends at DOE and our longtime and beloved Senator Lisa Murkowski is a validation of our efforts directed at reimagining this inner tie. The inner tie project is all about connection, the connection to the electric grid, connection to our neighbor Ketchikan, as well as connection to the global community through high-speed broadband in the future. It is about economic development in our community and throughout all of Southeast Alaska, while we cherish our independence and sovereignty as a native community, we also recognize that we are all stronger together when we are interconnected. Resiliency, as you stated, Ms. Murkowski, is all about having multiple options for powering our communities. And this project opens up many new options for renewable energy to both Metlakatla, Ketchikan and Southeast Alaska region. Again, I wanna thank the federal government for its investment into our community. And we look forward to expeditiously executing 
on this project in providing dep dependable, renewable power at a long-term reasonable price for all of our all of our consumers. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, um, uh, Secretary. I'm sorry, I think I may have interrupted you there. No, I was just giving him a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Um, at this point, we will open it up um, to press questions. Uh, if you have a question, if you don't mind raising your hand, uh, I will unmute you as I see your hands raised. It will take the first question from Peter Siegel um, from Journal Empire. And if you can identify yourself, Mr. Siegel. Hi, this is Peter Siegel from the Juno Empire. I was curious to know how these projects were selected. It sounds like the Metlakantla project has been around for a long time, but how were some of the other projects around Alaska in particular selected? Thank you. Mahela, I think should is the is the primary responsible for for it, so I think she should answer. Yeah, thank you for that question, um, and again, thank you all for um, uh, Senator Lisa Murkowski and Secretary Granholm and Kialani Yeah, um, my language. Thank you, um, and. Uh, being in this role for uh, a few months has been really amazing to see the process and also in the selection. We do have um, a committee and a selection committee and it goes through uh, reviews and based on scoring, um, that's how we were able to select uh, these 13 awards. So these were the highest scoring um, projects and that's how they were selected. We've got another question from uh, News of the North Newsroom. So if you can identify your name. Yes, hello, this is Kevin Allen from KINY News of the North. My question is that I saw some projects will provide funding for tribal members to maintain the projects. And so my question is, who will be responsible for maintenance of the projects? Kiolani, do you want to answer that? Um, that will be us with our with our council and then um, also our MPNL board. Um, Working together with our accountants and uh, and our um, our manager at the plant. Yep. Thank you. Thank um, you. And then also, depending on the projects, um, tribal members and internal uh, staff for the tribes. Thank you. Um, is there another question? Uh, Peter, I'm sorry, do you have one more question? Not at the moment, no, thank you. Okay, so your hand was raised. Uh, great, and so last call for question. And with that, we'll conclude today's press call. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, thank everybody. You, everyone. Thank, thank you, thank you. appreciate Darling. it very much. All right. In our language, we say "wai wa." That means "let's go." All right, wai wa, wai wa, wai wa. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks, Secretary.